Wired is a 1989 biopic directed by Larry Pierce and starring Michael Chiklis, Ray Sharkey, Lucinda Jenny, J.T. Walsh, Patty D'Arbanville, Gary Grooms, and Alex Rocco. The film opens with a reenactment of SNL when it was watchable. Yep, he's dead. Along came an officer and took me by the arm. I hate to talk about your mama. She's a sweet old soul. She got knobs on her titties that'll open the door. Huh? The morgue attendant goes to take a call and... <clears throat> oh, Jesus. It's zombie John Belushi, who finds a toe tag and gives us some bare-ass Michael Chiklis. Due to the horrible quality of this copy, I can't read any of that. Back at the morgue, John gets picked up by a cab and once taken back to the hotel. Then we cut to Bob Woodward talking to Judy, John's wife, about all the confusion. I see that. By the end of this, you're going to think Confusion was the original title of this fucking thing. And she enlists him to check into the case and make it public because John didn't like needles. If a doctor got out a needle, I mean, he would run from the room. How could he have died from a needle? This will be the film's rosebud. Yes, I am fucking serious. John talks to this driver who turns out to be his guardian angel. So he really sucks at his job. They stop at a diner and John starts to freak out a little bit. Yeah. Order me a cheeseburger with, with french fries and extra ketchup and a Pepsi Light. Okay, I had no clue what a Pepsi Light is, so I had to look it up. And it's kind of like a diet Pepsi with lemon in it, so... Then they're back in the cab. That scene in the diner was totally useless! It turns out Angel is there to take John on a trip to look at his life, which means they are also ripping off It's a Wonderful Life. I gotta go see Judy. When? When? When you first got married? All the times you were too fucked up to call home. I mean, did you want to see uh, that time you called her from the Playboy Mansion? That was harsh, yet it was true. We travel back to the past with a low-rent Dan Aykroyd and a kind of intervention that goes great. Wait a minute. Hey, I don't need this shit. I don't need this shit either. Hey, that's for sure. That's for sure. Hey, what's wrong with her? You're whacked out of your mind on blow? Trouble? So does he go back in his body at the time? Because I don't see him watching himself. They drive some more, and I realize that Scrooge did this better. Money, De Niro? What am I gonna do with money? You're a Mexican. Puerto Rican. Spick's a spick. What do you want? Tires, cologne, you know, one of them dogs with the head that goes like this, fuzzy dice. What do you want? Whoa! Angel gets pissed and dumps his ass off. Hey kids, it's the Blues Brothers. They go to meet Elvis and a Colonel and oh, it was a cold opener that wasn't even funny. That may be because NBC actually owns the bits that John Belushi did on SNL. So they had to write new ones. Poorly, I might add. Woodward talks to his editor, and I guess the post went 80 chic. Then we get another shitty bit, this time featuring a cone head. John is asked to sign a contract, but throws a fit, asking Arnie for his advice. Look, tell me, did you sign this fucking contract? I designed this fucking contract. And Arnie is his new manager. Holy shit, she's already burying him. There's a proposal, then a discussion about his drug problem, then another shitty skit that is getting very useless. Dan and John arrive in Wheaton, which is a flashback dead John is watching. Then the John in the flashback has his own flashback to the good old days. What the fuck? Angel says they have to leave, then they get into a fight on the lawn. What? Then it's time for the autopsy. 
This film has attention deficit syndrome! I'll begin the incision. Uh, are we going to watch all this? Nope, let's do another bit. Then some cocaine! Then there's some investigation. I'll tell you everything. Well, maybe we'll find out something. Yeah, find out that this movie sucks. Here's some more autopsy! Then it's a comedy class where the teacher needs to switch the Sanka. Comedy is aggression. You think that's an empty phrase? Run out there and kill him, knock him dead. Ha <laughs> ha, I murdered him! Bullshit! Then there's another bit. Then another flashback with Dan. Jesus fucking Christ! Bob listens to the Kathy tapes and it cuts to the real deal. Are you into heroin or anything? No. I was into heroin for a while. Yeah, he's not buying that shit. Oh, look what we have here. Ready to go. See, it wasn't four syringes, just one. What an investigation! What are we supposed to do in this case? We have people on the streets who die of drugs every goddamn day. A famous comedian died, people expect us to solve it. Or there's just some solution to this. He's just another fat junkie who went belly up. Damn! John and Dan arrive in Hollywood in the flashback as John and Angel sit in the back of the car with John trying to get Arnie's attention. Arnie! Hey, Arnie! Arnie! You still haven't learned how this shit works. John learns about the book. He gonna do for you what he did for Nixon. Nixon? Gonna call the book fire. Gonna trash your good name, Hemo, from here to... I'm fucked. Hey, wait until they make the fucking movie. Let's go watch Animal House. Let's go. Keep moving. Keep moving. That's good. That's good. That's good. Cookies. Okay, pile of cookies on. That's it. Okay. Okay. Banana. Get the, no, forget the banana. Uh, grab the sandwich. Sandwich. Put it in your pocket. Oh, no, 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 no. Put it in your pants. That's it. That's it. This whole thing has actually been debunked with most people saying that John Belushi improvised everything. Which makes fucking sense! It's low rent John Landis! I wonder if that helicopter noise in the background was a little shade they threw at John Landis because he threatened to sue their ass if they used his name, like most everyone in Hollywood did. Landis confronts John and makes a move to flush his coke, then BAM MOTHERFUCKER! This was in the book. But it has been debunked by John Landis, so fuck you movie. John then has a doctor's appointment. Then back on the set where things are going great! Fuck you! I'm not ready! Get the fuck out of here or I'll kill you! Then back to the doctor. 10, 20 acid trips. Uh, four different kinds of amphetamines. Oh, and I have a quaalude habit. <laughs> Next of kin. <laughs> I want some coke. <laughs> I want some coke! <laughs> hey! Coke is in. Coke is in. Who in the hell would eat at a pizza hut in New York City? Look at this respect for the dead. Holy shit, so what do we do? What's next? Take him out of the coffin. Holy shit! Meanwhile, on the plane... Getting off this plane, Arnie, and I'm getting off right now. Meanwhile, with Dan Aykroyd, and it was a respiratory problem, and he probably choked. Him. This movie is so far off the rails; it's steaming toward Portugal as we speak. Here's a flashback of the Blues Brothers being assholes in a jeep. 
There's a moment with Dan, a funeral procession, a talk with Arnie, and clubbing. John freaks out and, oh, I guess the movie is still on the rails. There's some photography that looks like it's going to be great, then John heads to LA to work on a script. Holy framed art. If this movie's purpose was to be so bad that the audience just wants John Belushi to go ahead and die, it's doing a great job. Bob talks to Kathy and it leads to nothing, leading to Bob examining the apartment as John and Angel play a game of pinball to decide whether he lives or dies. Spoiler alert, he loses. Kathy gets fucked up and then shoots John up. Then as John lays there dying, Bob Woodward interviews him. What the fuck? Oh, John, why did you shove a needle in your arm, day Because I need it! Because it's mine! And there's your rosebud, folks. I can't breathe. Breathe for me, Woodward. That probably falls in one of my top five worst deaths on film ever. Then Woodward fucking leaves. Here's a terrible impersonation of John Belushi imitating Joe Cocker. Based on Bob Woodward's book, or is it actually a docudrama about the writing of the book because Bob Woodward didn't appear in that piece, Wired is an excruciating film to watch with pacing that feels like you have ADHD. Marketed as the film that Hollywood doesn't want you to see because it exposes that deep dark underbelly, I think the real reason Hollywood didn't want you to see it was because it was taking a tragedy and making a fucking farce out of it. Judy Belushi hated this film, as did John's agent, Bernie Brillstein, who sued to make sure that his name wasn't in the film. He's Arnie and many other people such as Bill Murray and John Landis also filed suits to make sure you're not putting my name in this fucking thing. Years later, Michael Chiklis would apologize to Jim Belushi for being in the film because it's his first gig. He thought it was going to be the film role that made his career. He almost made it right into the fucking gutter. Dan Aykroyd would have J.T. Walsh fired from the film Loose Screws a few years later costing the production $125,000, so there was a fallout from this film when it was first released. Wired feels like it's trying to be some kind of trendy, high-end docudrama, but it's trash. And it's not even good trash like we watch on this show sometimes. There's nothing good about Wired, just a big pile of mediocrity. You were not only sleeping back there, you were farting incessantly, okay? Uh -huh. It's not real. Oh, thanks. Thanks again. I really appreciate this shit. 